We believe in a doctrine called dispensationalism. What does that mean? We believe in rightly dividing verses to the right group of people and the right time period. Because if you combine all the verses together and apply it to yourself, you're going to come up with major wrong doctrine. Now, one of the things that dispensationalism is helpful is concerning about the eating of meats. So let's talk about eating meats, and let's talk about being a vegetarian. So we see a few cults, for example, like Seventh-day Adventists. Now, not all Seventh-day Adventists are like this, but there's a decent amount of Seventh-day Adventists who are against eating meats, and they believe in promoting diet and uh, uh, having a vegetable sort of diet as well. They have a good mindset, though, about exercising and living a healthy life. But the problem is that they focus more on flesh than the spirit. That's their problem. And they come across issues concerning about dietary issues that have nothing to do with Christianity. This is not all Seventh-day Adventists, again. But let's cover this issue concerning about eating meats and vegetables. What, do Christ what is the Christian perspective? So, in the Old Testament, I hate doing this, but in the Old Testament right here, we see about eating meats, right? That it's, a lot of it is actually forbidden. There are, there are meats that they eat, but a lot of it is forbidden. So, cults, what they like to do is look at the Old Testament portion. By focusing on the Old Testament portion, you are not allowed to eat meats. The church age, however, we believe that you can eat meats or anything that you want. That's what we believe in. And then there are other time periods right over here. There's a tribulation right here, as well as the millennium, which is the 1,000-year reign of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, Jesus, when he died on the cross, he did away the Levitical law, you got to understand. So he did away the Levitical law, and thus, that's why Christianity, we are allowed to eat meats. Now, let's look at several passages. So your one hand is at Romans 14, right? We're going to look at another passage. Let's look at the book of Colossians. We're going to look at the book of Colossians. I want you to please turn to Colossians chapter 2, chapter 2. And then we will read Colossians chapter 2, verse 14, Colossians 2, 14. All right, people who are concerned about this eating of meats matter, I want you to look at these following verses and these will be very helpful to you. Let's start off at verse 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. So that's the law right there. The law. Jesus blotted it out. How? That was against us which was contrary to us and took it out of the way, nailing it to his what? Cross. So the cross right here. The cross right here did away with this law here. The meats issue, so when they pull up Old Testament verses on you, that's referring to the law. But Jesus Christ, his cross at Calvary, eliminated that for us. So remember that. Since that is the case, now keep reading. Verse 16, let no man therefore, see, Following this logic that the law is gone, then that means this forbidding meats is gone, right? Yeah, because keep reading. Uh, Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. Look at that. So this issue is gone then. This issue is gone. Now keep reading, which are a shadow of things to come, but the what? Body is of Christ. Isn't the church the body of Christ? Okay, if the church is the body of Christ, the verse says, but the body is of Christ. Distinguishing this from the days, Sabbath days, and meats, right? So it shows the body of Christ has no application to that. 
So remember that. So it shows right here, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What if I want to be a vegetarian? It doesn't matter. If you want to be a vegetarian, be my guest. We have members in our church who did that, and they cooked really awesome meals, actually. They cooked really awesome meals. I understand about the government, what they're doing with our food, and then uh, also with the water that we drink and stuff like that. But come on, let's be honest, all right? Compared to the dark ages right there, if they were able to have that kind of Christian freedom and liberty under God's grace, so do we. So do we. Everyone has their own way of eating and drinking, so just do that. That's it. Just do that. All right, now let's look at Romans chapter 14. That's what Paul mentioned. We're going to read verse 2. For one believeth that he may eat all things, another who is weak eateth herbs. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not, and let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth, for God hath received him. See that? God doesn't judge. Uh, God says leave the people alone if they don't want to eat this or if they want to eat it. Leave both sides alone. Look at verse 6. He that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord, and he that regardeth not the day to the Lord he doth not regard it. He that eateth eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks, and he that eateth not to the Lord he eateth not and giveth God thanks. See, it doesn't matter, the Bible says. So whether we eat or drink, we do it what? Look at 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. We, as long as we can do it to the glory of God, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong. We're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 31. Wherefore, therefore, ye eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all to the what? Glory of God. By the way, this even includes meats that were even offered to idols. Didn't you know that? You think the government co corrupting our food is bad? Imagine satanic idols corrupting the meats. And God said that it's okay to eat it. Really? Yeah, look at this one. Look at uh, verse 25. Whatsoever is sold in the shambles that eat, asking no question for conscience sake. <laughs> the shambles over there during that time were the pagan street markets where they dedicated to idols. Let's keep reading. Uh, verse 26. For the earth is the what? Lord's. And the fullness thereof. If any of them that believe not bids you to a feast and ye be disposed to go, whatsoever is set before you, what? Eat. Asking no question for conscience sake. Look at that. But if any man say unto you, this is offered in sacrifice unto idols, eat not for what? His sake that showed it, and for conscience sake. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Conscience, I say, not thine own, but of the other. For why is my liberty judge of another man's conscience? For if I by, for if I by grace be a partaker then why am I evil spoken of for that which I give thanks? Here's the key right here. Paul talks about if you want to put restrictions on eating, it has to do with edifying the church. That's the idea. Look, if I'm at a different country, and then they don't like to eat this or this or this, and they consist majority of my members, what am I going to do? I'm going to eat along with them. And I'm not going to eat what they're not going to eat. For conscience sake, if their culture eats this particular meal, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to eat along with them. Why? For, because that edifies them. Yeah. So here's the thing. I've seen, uh, we, had, we had some people in our church who, were, uh, who did not believe in eating certain meats, but then when they fellowshiped with us, you know what they did? They ate. Because uh, it consisted of a lot of Koreans, and we were at a Korean restaurant, they didn't want to offend the Korean culture, brothers and sisters in Christ. So they tried to eat along what we did. Now, you see that? That's what you should be doing with diets and eating. You got to think about what does it do with the brethren, what edifies the brethren. That's where you put the rules at. Now, look at the book of Timothy. Open your Bibles to the book of Timothy. We're going to look at 1 Timothy, please. 1 Timothy 
chapter 4. If there is a cult or a group out there that tells you that you cannot eat meat, that's from a cult. That's from a cult. You might say, why? Because that is a doctrine of devils. This is, okay, again, remember, if you don't like to eat meats, if you choose to be a vegetarian, that's not a doctrine of a devil. What's a doctrine of a devil is that you forbid somebody to eat meats. That's a doctrine of the devil because the Catholic Church likes to teach that on their uh, Friday moments, sh shall we call it. Let's look at the book of 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. The last part of verse 1 says doctrines of devils, correct? Mm. But look at verse 3, forbidding to marry. Does that sound Catholic to you? Mm. And commanding to what? Abstain from meats. Does that sound Catholic to you? Which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Seventh-day Adventists are really anti-Catholic. They hate the Catholic Church. But look at this. These Seventh-day Adventists, some of them who teach that doctrine, they join the Catholics right here. How about that? They're closer than you think, you wonder. Look at verse 4. For what? Every creature of God is good. Is that what it said? Yeah. Every creature of God is good. And nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. Here's the key. For it is sanctified by the what? Word of God and prayer. That's why we always pray before we eat. By doing that, the Lord blesses and honors the meal. All right, so we see according to Colossians chapter 2, verses 14, and I think it was up to verse 18 somewhere, or 19 just to be on the safe side. We also saw 1 Timothy chapter 4, and then we read from verses 1 through 5. And then Romans chapter 14, the first 10 verses, we saw that. And then we also saw, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and we saw the, the last verses on that one, the last 10 verses on that one. So we see right here concerning this matter, what we should do concerning about eating meats. And I hope this helped a lot of people out there. Amen. Especially when you go by Levitical law, you better be careful of that. A lot of people who stress and emphasize Levitical law, you better take cautions on that one. Yeah.